Hi, I'm Andrew Farrer, and I'm an Ancient DNA PhD student at the University of Adelaide, and I just won the three-minute thesis competition. The main thing that I got out of the competition was being able to distill my research to find the key points to tell my story. I entered the three-minute thesis competition for a chance to present my research to a wide audience and see what other researchers around the university were working on. My advice to someone thinking about entering the competition would be to just go for it. You'll learn a surprising amount about your own research. And now I'm going to Queensland to represent the University of Adelaide in the national three-minute thesis final. And I won a giant novelty check. <laughs> Here's my presentation. Enjoy. I'd like you to step back in time. Our next speaker, Andrew Farrer, will present his talk, Ancient DNA and the Life on Us. I'd like to introduce you all to Georgina. Georgina, as I've called her, lived in medieval London during some of the worst disease epidemics to ever strike the city, beginning with the Black Death in 1348. And sadly, she died before her 26th birthday and was buried in an abbey cemetery close to the Tower of London. But today, I've recruited her and over 200 other men and women from the last one and a half thousand years of British history for a medical study. A study to look at how their life experiences impacted the bacteria that lived on their bodies. Because you see, our bodies are reliant on bacteria. Bacteria help us digest our food, they produce vitamins, and they work incredibly closely with our immune system. This community of bacteria is so critical that without it, we would die. Now, disease can be caused by a single bacteria entering the body, as happened during the Black Death. But many diseases are triggered by an alteration to this bacterial community, which can result in things such as respiratory disorders, kidney disease, obesity, and even depression. Treatments for bacterial-based disease include antibiotics and bacterial replacement therapies. But these are crude because they don't account for or maintain the natural and healthy variation of the bacterial community that we see among all of us. So the questions we need to be asking are, what is it that we're doing in our lifestyles that causes this bacterial community to change? And therefore, what can we do to help the healthy bacteria recover by themselves? And this is where my historical recruits come in, because they've had many life experiences. They were rich and poor, urban, rural. They've lived through wars like the English Civil War and disease epidemics such as the Black Death. They witnessed the industrialization and globalization of our world. From them, I have taken the only accurate archaeological sample of these bacteria, the dental plaque, which, as you can see in the top right picture, is still present on their teeth today. From this plaque, I can recover ancient bacterial DNA and identify the bacteria that were present during life. This allows me to observe how this bacterial community has altered over the generations and reveals which of all of those life experiences had the biggest impact. I've already been able to show that a new bacterial group entered during the Viking settlement of Britain around 900 AD. This group is still with us today, though unfortunately makes it easier for other disease-causing bacteria to enter. Once my analyses are complete, I will be able to inform medical research of, of the key events that caused change in our ancestors, an indication of the events that can have an impact on us today. And this will help guide the development of new treatments for bacterial-based disease, so that one day we will no longer be so reliant on antibiotics. Thank you.